Gotta go pee now. <laughs> All right, for my special guest tonight, he's here to talk about his new film, The Networker. Let's give him a late night welcome for actor producer Steve Stanulis. <laughs> Steve, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? That was some act I have to follow with the illusionist. A <laughs> long that's time. It's pretty awesome. Uh, they were, they were, knives throwing, bands, everything's happening. The modern day uh, Harry Houdini's, right? Yeah, unbelievable. Shout out, shout out. Long time no see. I know. I finally made it here. We've been talking about this for a long time, and uh, here we are. A very, very long time. So. Yeah. Congratulations on your new two your twins. Yeah, twins. Yes, yes, I got uh eight month old twins, a boy and a girl, yes. What's their names? Uh Chase and Sienna. Oh nice. And that they're teething now. So that's uh my uh that's my whole little thing going on right now. So sleep is at a minimum right now. Uh forget it. You got your hands full. Oh no no pun intended. I got three. <laughs> so great, I went from zero to three, but it's all good. Oh, God bless yeah, you. Yeah, that's You're awesome. a native Staten Islander, right? I am. I am a native Staten Island. I left for a little bit and since I had the kids, I came back. And where were you before? Well, I moved to the city. I didn't okay. go far. Yeah. I moved to Battery Park and right. came back and I'm <laughs> back in Annadale. So uh, I came full circle. So. Nothing's like the South Shore. We, I think it's the nicest part of the island. You know, uh, you know, Island's a great part. It's a great place to live. So I mean, they, they kill the borough a little bit, but you know what? Like it's, anywhere else. You could you could live in worse places, so it's not too bad. Now, why don't you give us a little family background with people that don't know you? Sure, sure. Um, I was a New York City cop, mm -hmm. um, which, and actually a Chippendale dancer at the same time. And yes. uh, we got a new book that came out, Sex and the Shield. It's coming out in, uh, in June. June, right? Two fifteen. Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And it's just my whole, my whole time as being a, a cop by day and a Chippendale dancer at night. And they used to call you Savage Steve, Steve right? Steve Savage. Steve, Steve Savage, Savage, yes. I was yes, reading yes. it. Yeah, so I started dancing when I was 18. Uh -huh. And uh, I got called by the police department mm -hmm. So at 20. So I, I just never stopped dancing. That's young. Yeah, I know. It's actually pretty crazy. And then um, yeah, I just never stopped dancing. So mm -hmm. I worked, at, worked dancing the whole time, and uh, nobody cared. If it was today, I'd be, I would have been fired in about two minutes with, you know, YouTube, social media. I would have been, you know. Uh, None uh, of your fellow cops busted Everybody knew what I did. I mean, my, 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 uh, my cap, my duty captain. Was a, was a female. Oh, really? And she used to come to the shows. Oh, and it was, it was cool, and nobody cared. And, you know, everybody knew, except for uh, internal affairs. Uh. So that, <laughs> that would kind of work out. <laughs> but so. you, you don't look like your typical everyday cop. You're a regular neighborhood street guy. Yeah, you know what? I, I, was, I was probably your most non cop cop you can have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, if I could, you know, I hate writing tickets. I, I hated, you know, I was one of those guys, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Yeah. But as soon as my uniform came off, I could, you know, if you want to smoke pot, you want to do it, it's fine. That's the, that's the way you got to be. You know, some guys, they bring it home with them, and it's like, come on, yeah, this guy's relax. Like, yeah, there's like 24-7 cops, you know what I mean? I, you know, I remember being in a roll call one day, and I was with my partner. I said, you know what? I would never hang out with any of these guys outside this gig. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, so it was a, it was a cool time. Now, what got you into the entertainment business? Was it part of the Chippendale thing and that led into it? Yeah, yeah that's another funny story. Um, one day I'm working at Chippendales, and this guy comes up to me, and he goes, uh, I got some girls back in my apartment I want you to dance for. So I'm like, yeah, right, bro. So anyway, I'm, I'm hanging out, and I come up, the guy's still there. So I'm like, dude, I'm a cop. And he's like, no, 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 I really have these girls. So I said, all right, great. I, I go to their house, and there's these two chicks. So I end up dancing for them, and uh, he hands me like 2,000. Nice. To me, two thousand. You know, two thousand dollars <laughs> for me at that time was amazing. And he goes, "By the way, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio's money manager. Would you be interested in working security with Leo?" So I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." I, I could kind of like I made two grand, whatever. He calls me the very next day, mm -hmm. and he goes, uh, "Leo's here. He wants to meet you." So I'm like, "What time?" He's like, nine. I'm like, well, "Can I do it at ten? I have a bachelorette party." So he's like, "Really?" So anyway, so I end up showing up late. So I walk in. Now Leo just did Titanic. Oh yeah. So he's. I mean, this is when he was at the height. And uh, I mean, I walk in and we have nothing in common. I mean, he's like the biggest star on the planet. I'm a stripper cop. What do you have in common, right? So, uh, so we saw. You know, it, it, you know, it was a weird dynamic of trying to break the ice. I ended up tearing my ACL. Uh huh. And he tore his ACL on Basketball Diaries. Oh really? So he goes, uh, Do you mind if I see your scar? 
So I, I just said, yeah, as long as you don't mind the purple G-string I'm wearing, and <laughs> broke the ice, and then uh, everything Leo did, I did. And then uh, since I was Leo's guy, I started working with Cameron Diaz, uh, uh, Toby McGuire, uh, any A-list guy, 99, Ben Affleck. To, um, that must have been fun, right? Yeah, it was pretty wild. And, uh, and then one day I'm at a party, and um, this guy goes, do you ever play football? So I said, yeah, I play a little. He goes, you'd be great. I'm doing this movie called The Replacements with Keanu Reeves and Gene Hackman. So I said, sure. Two weeks later, I'm in Baltimore shooting with Gene Hackman and Keanu Reeves. And uh, yeah, I got, you know, I got into the whole thing. And then I got into um, Gangs of New York. Uh -huh. And then uh, I'm like, wow, I better hone my craft here. Because one day I'm going to be put in a situation I'm not going to be able to handle. And then uh, the guy that introduced me to him, and I'm getting indicted for swindling money. It was a huge story. So all, went, all my contacts went away. Uh -huh. So it was good because I had to do everything on my own. So uh, I started producing a lot of films. Um, and I've done a lot of different things. And then, you know, here we are with The Networker, so. Yeah, The Networker, let's talk about that. You got a lot of big names. Yeah, yeah, this. yeah. The Networker, um, we, we, we shot for a small budget, but through a lot of friends and contacts. I had uh, William Forsyth, mm -hmm. played my dad. Sean Young, who played my mom. Alicia Reiner from Orange is the New Black. Uh -huh. um, William Forsyth, I said William Forsyth? Yeah, right? Victor um, Coluccio was in it, right? Victor Coluccio, Jeremy Luke. Jeremy, uh, um, I mean, it was amazing. Al cast. Sapienza. Al Sapienza. And it, it's, an, it's, it's a romantic comedy, which is tough to sell. And uh, we just premiered at the Soho Film Festival. And basically, uh, you know, we got rave reviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's off and running, and there's about Ten people that want to pick it up, so it should be on, you know, um, it should be again, a theatrical release, mm -hmm. and then it should go to like, um, you know, HBO, Star, Showtime, On Demand, On Demand, all that stuff. Well, four of those actors we just talked about were just on. We just visited. I know. Last I year. saw. Yeah, William you were here. was here. Right, right, sure. William Forsythe, you can't get any better than him. He's like a guy that should have been like on the John Travolta status. He's such a great actor. Well, I'll tell you what, William He's could such play. A great uh, actor. He could play a street guy, or he could do Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's an amazing guy. And he's convincible. Yes, and yeah, and, and again, he plays my dad, and there's one scene where he stands over me and starts yelling at me, and I was scared shit. I'm like, holy shit, well, you know, he, he's an intimidating guy. Well, guess and what? I have the trailer here. Oh, you do? Yeah, I wanted to surprise you. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, I'm glad, yeah, definitely. Anybody, everybody want to see the trailer? <laughs> Control room. Let's roll a clip of the networker. You never mind my antiquated use of the English language, John. I may be a dinosaur, but I understand one word. Responsibility. I'm gonna give you three months to come up with a business plan that works. Not fair. Whoever said life's fair, son. Good morning. How are we doing today? We have a very simple philosophy. Meet, greet, and do business. Take a good look at me, John. Do you know why? Why? I am speed networking. I coach people in networking. Not bad, I guess. You just used the word bad. <sighs> That's not good. And I know deep down inside you're a good person. I couldn't have been wrong about that. But I can't keep digging through the lies to find that good guy. I can't do this anymore. Dumping me? Possibly John's lack of responsibility, especially with women, may very well be due to a deeply rooted sexual identity problem. Is that why you have a deep rooted urge to lift your leg every time you see a tree? Look, can we just sit down to one Sunday meal without the two of you going at it like alley cats? Pass me the meatballs. Very nice. You know, we forgot to say, uh, Stephen Baldwin. Oh, Stephen Baldwin, right? Joey D'Onofrio. Joey D'Onofrio, he yeah, was I mean, here. Yeah, again, I, I can't even say how small the budget was on this thing. Nobody would believe it. But uh, again, when you believe in a project and everybody likes the script, you'd be surprised what people do. I'm an editor and I believe if the acting is there, it doesn't matter what you shoot it on. Sure, sure. And again, you do a romantic comedy, you're not blowing shit up. No. You know, it's all about locations, it's all about the story. So yeah, it was it was it was a pleasant surprise. How was it working with Stephen Baldwin? I heard I, I see, yeah. <sighs> I'll give you a Stephen Baldwin story. I heard he's a lot of laughs. He's a lot of laughs. He's I love him. <laughs> he's a dear friend. But uh, 
Steven shows up. Uh, if you're an actor, you can appreciate it or not appreciate it. Steven shows up the day of set, and he goes, uh, by the way, I rewrote all my lines. He goes, your lines are the same, <laughs> but all my stuff's different. So I said, oh, okay, all right, we'll do, it. we'll do what we can. So, you know, we start shooting. He forgot his lines that he only knows, <laughs> and then give it the script supervisor the lines. So, you know, he, you know, this continuity and everything. So we had a problem because every take he would say something different. That's hilarious. And, you know, it, it was hilarious now. And he gave a great performance, but it wasn't hilarious on set in 90 degree weather outside sweating. Uh, it's a scene that should have took about 10 minutes. It probably took about seven hours. So, but uh, but he did a great. I mean, at the end, he delivered. It's like being a Kennedy. You know, you have a both when you get to tr you get to yeah. mess around a little. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's but he's 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 an awesome guy, and uh, you know, I, I was grateful to have him in the film as well. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's that's absolutely uh, it's on fire. Really, I I don't want to say anything too much. We're playing in the Hoboken Film Festival this week. Mm -hmm. And then I'm done with festivals. We're just going to sell it and, uh, and move on to the next film. Well, all the best. It's almost your time. Why don't you just talk fast and give us a little brief on the, uh, your new book that's coming out. You, you were talking before. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sex so and the Shield. Sex and the Shield is basically uh, a memoir of, of my, my, my greatest cop stuff with my greatest dancing stuff with the whole celebrity mm -hmm. security stuff all in one. So you have sex, uh, celebrity, and cop stories, which uh, every other hopefully bestsellers. Almost like Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. Sex and the Shield. Check it out. 2015. Oh, Steve, it was my pleasure having you on the show. You're a great guy ever since we've known each other. Yes, yes. You know, you're always welcome here. Where can people find you on the internet? Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram. All right. Check it out. Well, good. Steve Stanulis, everybody. <laughs>